The date is January 20th, 2017. The time is 6.30 p.m. Chairman Rick Charette. Present. Vice Chairman David Champy II. Present. Bob Collins. Here. Gary Ciccaroni. Jim Freeman. Ed Camo. Here. Rich Zacker. Here. Diane Smith. Mr. Chairman, we have enough for a quorum. Two of the members are absent. If they show up, we'll put them to work. So we're not going to appoint alternates because we don't have any. Public comments. Not yet. <laughs> um, today, before our meeting, we're going to have a public hearing to review proposals to amend the zoning ordinance. And they're both zoning ordinance, right? There's, there's one of them. Thank you. They're, they're on separate sheets, Mr. Chairman. I got one. The um one one of the one of the uh oh, let's first start the public hearing. Thank you. So the hearing is called to order. If anyone wishes to address the board instead of a sign-in sheet, because there's not a lot of people here, just state your name and your address. And all questions come to the chair. Parties won't address each other directly. Identify yourself before you speak. Do not engage in side conversations. So the, um, I'm going to read the text of the public hearing. There's, there's two zoning ordinances. One is accessory dwellings, and the other is non-conforming lots. So, on the non-conforming lots, that's uh, Article X zoning changes. It's mostly for non-conforming lots to make uh, zoning as restrictive as possible or changes on non-conforming lots. You want to ex explain what that one's about, Rick? Rich? Sure. sure. Um, our, our existing zoning has a phrase, a clause in it that says, uh, when you go to modify or construct a building on a non-conforming lot, a non-conforming lot is generally less than two acres. So if you've got a small lot and you want to make a modification to uh, the structure, the zoning board, our zoning in the past required the ZBA, you have to go for a variance, this required uh, the ZBA to consider the location of the well and septic, your well and septic system on your lot. And the point was you couldn't uh, impact those two items, well or septic system and therefore the ZBA was sort of obligated to give you a variance to do what you want to do. So we're proposing a change to that to say you cannot impact the well or septic system of an abutter but the ZBA may require you to move your septic system but that's their call. So that's the thrust of that, that proposed change. And the second one has to do with accessory dwelling units, which are, for lack of a different word, apartments. You could have an in-law apartment, for say, in your house, attached to the house. And there have, we have accessory dwelling regulations in our zoning, but the new state regulations for this year came out and we have to be compliant with them. And 
one of the big ones we weren't compliant was square footage of accessory dwelling unit. So what we did was we um, changed the language of the accessory dwelling unit zoning to um, comply with the state. And we simplified it quite a bit too because it was, um, it was really extensive. It was a whole list of do's and don'ts. And um, the, the spirit of accessory dwelling remains with the streamlined new language. It's um, and it's compliant with the state. So, so both of these, if they pass this public hearing, they're going to go on the ballot, and people get to vote on them. So that's that's what that's basically what it is. We we make the zoning changes. We have a public hearing. And if anybody has any input or anything into the changes, this is the time to do it. And once um, that's satisfied, we close the public hearing, we deliberate, we make the language for the um, warrant articles that will be on the ballot, and the people get to see them and vote on them. So that's why we're here. Do we, do we need any more definition on the accessory dwellings? David, do you have anything to that? No, I think um, we did add um, definition as well. Um, the dwelling unit accessory and dwelling unit uh, single family. We we added the the same verbiage that is in the uh, proposal ordinance. So they match, correct? Anyone have any discussion on the accessory dwellings or the uh, non-conforming lots? Okay. At this point, we'll close the public hearing and deliberate to see whether. Did, did they want to? Did you guys want to? I mean, take some time. I mean, if, if you want to take some time to digest it, to decide if you've got any questions or comments, I mean, we can certainly wait. Yeah, I'm, I've been accused of being pretty quick on the trigger on <laughs> <laughs> moving from section to section. Nope. Okay, any comments? I feel one coming. <laughs> I feel trouble. Or questions. I mean, yeah. any, any, sort, any sort of input you, or anything you need to ask in order to figure it out, you're welcome to do so. So what, uh, I guess the accessory drawing unit doesn't really define whether could be a room within a home. Yes. yes. So there's no square footage requirement as far as what a accessory development unit needs to have as 
far as uh, utilities or whatnot? No. Not anymore. No. There's not a minimum square footage, but it does need to have some place to sleep and cook and right. wash yourself. Right. Right. So it has to meet the uh, be a dwelling. Sure. Right. But yes. If you want to do that in a room, right. you could. Okay. Right. Or it could be two thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be an occupied dwelling? Uh, there, there is no requirement that it be okay. occupied. So it could be something that you have. Absolutely, yes. So, um, the, in the old zoning, it was it was big. Was it about eight hundred square foot minimum? Six, six to eight hundred feet, yes. Mm -hmm. But you know, you got people living in tiny houses and mm -hmm. things like that. And how how much square feet do you need? I mean, that needs to be determined by whoever's doing this. And there are building codes, etc. Put certain limitations on things too, and that all has to be complied with. So you can't just take that spare room and throw a bathroom in. Right. Well, right. maybe you can, but but it has to have a separate entrance. And I mean, entrance into the dwelling. The um, the new house that was built on Blue Mountain Road has accessory dwelling. On it. Right, it's on the basement level, is that right? Yeah, so it, it yeah. still looks like a one-family house and it's characteristic of the houses that are in the neighborhood, et cetera. And it's so is having an exterior door to the sister dwelling unit a requirement or not a separate entrance? Is that? I forget. What is that, there's nothing in the this. But an exterior door, separate right. exterior. Right. So a, yeah, I don't believe that you're required to have an exterior yeah, entrance. Okay. It's required to have an in interior entrance, correct? Right? Connecting, I believe it's connecting to the connecting to the house primary. Oh, I know that. I think the old yeah. The number, item number four: there shall be an interior door. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but I don't think you have to have a separate exterior door. So if it, I mean, but if you didn't, you would probably really would be in law, right? It would be a private right. Yeah. right? Yes. And <laughs> so, so I guess that's the gray area. It doesn't really. I mean, everybody could take. Uh, <coughs> You know, a ranch home and divide mm -hmm. part of it and still use the same front door. Everybody right. would have two dwellings there. Yes. Yep. If everyone that was living there was comfortable with that, yeah, yeah. yeah. no yeah. problem with that. <clears throat> so, to answer your first question, by definition, the proposed uh, definition that we have is a residential for accessory dwelling unit. A residential living unit incidental and subordinate to the single family dwelling with which it is associated that provides independent living facilities for one or more persons, including provisions for sleeping, eating, cooking, and sanitation on the same parcel of land as the principal dwelling it accompanies. And it also has to meet septic requirements. Correct. Anything else? Did the non-conforming lot change make sense? Basically, we're trying to close the loophole the people were using. So, oh, regarding uh, two acre, the septic in the well. Yeah. If you're if you're taking an old camp and turning it in, building a nice house there. Yes. Right. You just you know the current zoning makes it so that you can not meet the setback from like the lake or something like that if your existing septic or well is there. And if you're, you know, the idea here is that currently the ZBA who would be granting the variance doesn't really have a choice. It said, our zoning says that's a, that's a reason for them to, that they have to, you know, allow a violation of setback. And the idea here is that they can would turn that into a judgment call for them. So if somebody if it's a hardship for somebody to put in a new septic in order to meet the setbacks, they can let them keep at the septic that's there and violate the setback. If it's not a hardship for them, they can say, no, you get to meet the setback, even though, you're, even though it would mean replacing your septic system. It's basically giving the CBA more structure. Well, allow, untying their hands a little bit to, to make, a better, make better choices. With the new septic laws in the state, 
you got a small camp and you turn it into a big full-time home, it's likely that the um, septic system is going to be non-compliant anyway. So you can't use the old septic system right. as a hardship to change the setbacks when the intention is to rip it up and put a new one anyway. Yes. So this helps with stuff like that. Anything else? Okay, the um, public hearing is closed. You want a motion? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, place the ADU Warren article on the ballot. Second. <clears throat> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You got another motion? I do, well, as soon as George is ready. If you can't write it down, it didn't happen, so. You ready? Mr. Chairman, I move that we place the Article 4 non-conforming use uh, proposed zoning ordinance change on the ballot. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Does anybody want to look at this language for the proposed questions? Does everyone have a copy of it? Judge, did everyone get this? I do not have a copy. No. I'll read it. What is it? It's the proposed language for the uh, Warrant announced for the ballot. From? From, from uh, Mit Mitchell Municipal Group, Warren Respect okay. Morgan, okay. Esquire. Ready? Ready? The first one, are you in favor of amendment number one to the Brookfield Zoning Ordinance as proposed by the Brookfield Planning Board as follows? Repeal the existing provisions regarding accessory dwelling units, ADUs, and adopt new provisions allowing one ADU per property provided the ADU is contained within the attached to or attached to an existing single family dwelling. There is a door between the ADU and the single family dwelling. The owner occupies one of the units and the units are in common ownership. All town regulations which apply to single family homes shall apply to single family homes with ADUs. Additionally, to add a definition of accessory dwelling unit and re-letter subsequent definitions. Okay. Perfect. The second one I will read. Are you in favor of amendment number two to the Brookfield Zoning Ordinance as proposed by the Brookfield Planning Board as follows? Clarify that all changes, alterations, additions, and new accessory buildings to existing non-conforming structures shall be required to provide for setbacks which are as restrictive as possible. That's not correct. Okay. That doesn't talk about the well at all. Do you think it should mention the well? Absolutely. So? Absolutely. The well and septic system. Can you read it just one more time? Yes. Are you in favor of amendment number two to the Brookfield Zoning Ordinance as proposed by the Brookfield Planning Board as follows? Clarify that all changes, alterations, additions, and new accessory buildings to existing non conforming structures shall be required to provide for setbacks which are restrictive as possible. And the, and the wording we changed, uh, she, I don't think she understood it. Additional structures or additions to existing structures jeopardize the ingress or egress of the lot or septic system or well of any abutting lot. We changed to the abutting lot. That was the phrase we put in there. Right. That isn't even mentioned there. So we should go back to the drawing board on that one. I think so. 
I don't think she understood what we were changing. Yeah, I think it would be what she said, but maybe it was something to the effect of without regard to the existing well or septic system or something. To that. I mean, I think it has to mention those things. I think so. In one way or another. Okay, we'll get back to her on that and we'll get um, new wording for that, unless, unless you want to word it right now. She's going to have to approve it anyway. Right. I, I might as well just have, have her do it. Her, yeah. Do we have a, Do we know when the deadline is for when we have to have that wording approved? Um, the last day to to, to uh, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, if I speak. Go ahead. Uh, the last day to deliver the official copy of the final amendments to the town clerk is February seventh. So we're looking at another meeting. No, we're here. No, I don't need to hear. There was those don't require here. We're not changing the intent. We're changing the wording that we're putting on the warrant. Clarifying it. I, I suggest we send her highlights of what we're actually changing. Yes. <clears throat> we'll send her a highlighted copy of what we're actually changing and explain that we want the wording of, for the septic systems in the warrant article. As soon as we, how, how quick is the turnaround with her, Judge? Do you want to schedule another meeting just to check this wording? You have to, right? You want to wait till we get the wording back before we schedule it? I think that if we have a meeting scheduled and let her know, she'll have it done. I mean, she better. Okay, pick a day. I prefer a Friday. You do? What's the, what's the date next Friday? Oh, we got 2017 now. Uh, 27th next Friday. Yeah. I'm okay with that. You got no life? I have no life. I'm okay with it. It should be a quick meeting. It's the meeting will be just to review the wording for number two. You okay with that, Rick? 27? Ed? Yes, that's fine. Josh? Is the yes. room available? Oh, I don't know. I think so Friday. Anyway. Friday. Who's going to come down here on a Friday? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So get that right out to her, please. And I'll uh, send out notices for the special meeting. Yes. And um, do you want a motion for the first to accept the first wording for the first one? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the wording from the board attorney for warrant article number one. Oh, so or, or, I'm sorry, zoning. Was it? What's it called? Zoning amendment number one. Yes. Zoning amendment number one. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The word is accepted. And next week we'll look over amendment number two on Friday real quick, right? Uh, all, the, all the time it takes. It could take a long time. All the time it takes to review article number two, we will. And you're just going to make the normal posting on that, right? Yes, I am. So that would be bulletin boards? And, and the uh, website. Website. Special meeting. Is that what that says? Yes. Okay. Closing the deliberation. Until, well, no, I'm closing it. Continue it to the meeting on December. Uh, February 27th. Well, I think you're, I, mean, I think we already deliberated and made the decision that we're going to not make further changes and we're right. going to move forward. I think the, the wording of the, that goes on the warrant article is not 
I think, part of the deliberation. I think it was just separate. Okay, so the deliberation is just to, um, was to say that we're going to put these on. Right. If we wanted to keep the public hearing open because we wanted further input or something else, we'd want to continue it. Public hearing is closed. Right. So the deliberations are just part of our okay. meeting, I think. On to the rest of our regular meeting. So just to be clear, it's January 27th. At 6.30 p.m. Did I say February? Yes. <laughs> Who wants this stuff? That's why we got some smart people there. Announcements, correspondence, and email. We have town and city in a new one. Convene two magazines that came to, to us. If anybody's interested in looking at them, they'll be in the room. S.P. Perron. This is the plan for Fred's conservation easement. It's being recorded, so a copy is filed with the planning board for informational purpose. Steve Perron. Does anyone want to look at this? Is it being reported, you said, Rick? Yes. What about the box? You just said Fred. That's what the note said. <laughs> no, Fred, uh, um, can. 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 Wow. How many acres is he putting in? Does it specify? 149.88 acres. And he's keeping out about 12? 15.79. Oh, and 13. Looks like there's a couple of Wow. They put the 15.79 the where the home is in that extra lot up front that he was keeping out. 13.35. This gentleman, Fred Kahn, put 150 acres into conservation. That's going to tie in with uh, Lake Wentworth and what else is that with Moose Mountain, Greenwood? It doesn't, doesn't touch Moose Mountain. It goes the no, other doesn't. watershed down towards the back of Lake, or Lake Wentworth. So I heard it was a beautiful piece of property with a brook going down to the lake. Uh, George, for your record, for the minutes, it's map 24, lot 7. Thank you. And map 26, lot 18. Or maybe those are the, maybe those are the abutting ones. Does it say what, what lot it actually is? It should be right in the center right there. I don't see it. Yeah, that 25-3 is a budding lot. It's a budding lot, yeah. A budding lot. It's not on the lower right. Tax map 25, lot 1. This doesn't require any signature from us. It's just no. I think the, this is the RSA that says that anything they report that to some supply. And one went, I believe, to the register of deeds. That's where it gets reported. Let's give a copy to the assessor clerk for the her file also. We got two copies. Yes. Um, they're different. They're different? Yeah, they're small. There's one well, that highlights the front lots that remain, and then once the whole, the whole thing. Okay. Well, if they don't lose them, we can get them back, I guess, if they're reported. Does, does the plan report keep this? I don't know. I know Jessica has a file for every lot 
every map and lot. So she's got a logical place for them. Do we keep these jobs? We, we do. We have the last time earlier last year, we had somebody that submitted that from um, Mr. Berlin, just for the sake of documenting it. But I mean, it's kind of what's been submitted to the assessor for. Where do we file them? We have this. Uh, if the public want to see them, given it's a public document, where would they go to see that? They would have to see me, and I would have to pull it out, which is the same thing that, that the assessor clerk would do, too. It's just that they would have to know to come to me. That's the only thing. Do we need two sets? It makes sense to have two sets. So when we put this in our file, is it going to be in there with just one other one, or do we have many? I, I mean, you... From years past. In the, in, the, in the past, usually, well, when we file the documentation for a site plan review or a subdivision, we require that they supply us with four. One would go to cartographic, one would go to the assessor clerk, and we, we might have two on file. Well, this one was sent to us, so we'll file it. Uh, we could, um, we can have Jessica ask him to send another copy. Uh, my, my point is that she keeps records by every map and lot. If there's ever a transaction on a map and lot, we go there to see what the transaction is. Independent of order. So we need to. Will you request from Mr. Perrin another copy, Judge? for the assessor clerk. Do we know if the assessor clerk might have already had one mail? That happened that's before. specifically labeled to the planning board. Yeah, if he wants his assessment to change, he probably has to talk to her anyway. That's why he needs a copy for her. Right, but he might be supplying that anyway. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if the assessment changes. It's in current use. So I suspect, you know, I, I know what the assessor's going to do. Between current use and conservation, it might be the same tax bill. Yeah. You find out if she got one? Yep. We'll ask her. And if she didn't, we'll get her one. And about the public access, if that's going to be registered register of deeds. They can get it there. The deeds is online, so that change would be available yep. through the deeds. Okay. Rich, will you let me know if she got a copy? Be a week. It'll be a week. Okay. So I'll hold off until then. Hold off until I ask you to do it. Remind me in a week, please. Can you do that? is review and possible approval of the minutes of December 15th. Also, George, did you tell me you included the minutes of the January meeting? Yes. Does everybody have a copy of that? Yes, they do. These are the minutes of the previous meeting, and we just take a couple minutes to look over and make sure everything is the way we remember and take it from there. Do you have copies of this? You can look at it if you like, They're right here.
Do you have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move to accept, we're going to do both minutes, right? Yep. Accept both meeting minutes from Thursday, December 15th, 2016, and Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. As Second. submitted. As written. Second. Are you asking for a second? Or yeah, I'm asking, asking, I'm asking I'll, I'll a second. second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are accepted. We didn't put anything in new business for this month. Old business at the moment is empty. Mr. Chairman, I'm yep. curious about the handout that starts with Article 2 districts and this last one over here. Do we have something going on with that section board? Uh, no, you're not supposed to have that. Okay, I don't have it then. Um, public comments, again. <laughs> Member comments. Yes, I have a comment. Suggestion. Uh, since next Friday's meeting, it is next Friday, it will be very short, and I don't want to make it a longer meeting than it has to be, but there are some legislative hearings coming up in reference to planning, and I would like to bring them to the board so we can at least read them to see if we want to say anything about it, if you want me to uh, represent the board's opinion or your own personal opinion, you could go yourself. Um, the hearings have not been scheduled yet for the ones I'm going to bring in. Um, some of them are about how we function and uh, how uh, the zoning board work and other items. How thick is it? I'll only bring in, I'll only bring in the ones that have not been heard yet because they did start hearing some past few weeks. These haven't been scheduled, so they'll, we have time to respond to them. And I, I bring this up because the legislature creates planning changes that go into law, and the planning boards hear about them after the fact. The public usually never hears about them through the planning board, and the planning board never gets to respond to them. So what I've been trying to do is bring the information to the board so we can look at the, look at the legislation that's coming up uh, ahead of time. In the beginning of the year, we try to review, not try, we review the um, already passed zoning and laws that are on our books. So we go through it and we make sure we understand the additions. But I'm trying to go ahead of that and get to when it actually starts before so we can if you didn't agree with when SB 146 came in, which was about um, the ADUs, if you didn't agree with it, we would have brought it up and then perhaps you could have went down and testified against it or told your representative to vote against it or reasons why you didn't like it. So we're just trying to get ahead of that. So I can just bring in a few. Those, uh, I, have, I have the time and I'd like to look at that. Does anyone else? Agree with that? I do. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. I'll put that on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. It's been um, a huge help on the land use books. They they put in changes and they just say what the changes are and just tell you to go find it. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. But um, they all know. Everyone knows where these changes come from and. and it's been tracking them out and making a comprehensive list for us to go through and be able to find these quick and go over them and see which ones affect Brookfield. Then we know, there's no surprises. Because these books can go on and on and on and then you, you find something that's been changed a long time ago and never even knew about it. So it's good exposure, thank you. Ed. Many times there'll be legislation that would directly affect your private property and it goes on a consent calendar on that day in the House. 
So nobody, nobody knows it even came through. They, it's just put on a list of things that are passed and everybody just goes, I, and votes it. And there's no debate. Now, as a legislator, I can pull anything off that consent calendar and then debate it. And what you're doing is you're debating the recommendation that the committee uh, had set forth. So, so if the committee voted ought to pass for the ADUs and someone didn't agree with it on the House, they would pull that bill and then they could talk about ADUs and argue and try to overturn that, that committee recommendation. Um, but we should be able to do this ahead of time. Three of our four reps are from Brookfield. Ed, there's uh, Bill Nelson on the selectman, and Bill Marsh, who's the town moderator. So, you know, to, to have these resources in town, so it's pretty good. Zed sits down with us every month. Makes it, makes it interesting. And everyone at the state house listens to what Ed says. So. That's right. <laughs> you have a direct conduit straight through the legislature to the governor. Right? Can I have one more last comment? <laughs> That's actually, it's actually. A, a you can have one more comment, but it might not be the last. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll make sure it's the last. Um, we have membership in the New Hampshire Municipal Association. The New Hampshire Municipal Association is. It collects membership dues from all these towns, from towns, and they become members and they, you know, they do some, some good things, but they actually hire a, uh, a lobbyist, and his name is Cordell Johnson. I recently put in a bill, it was about the 91A right to know law. It basically stated that if a town has a website, instead of the law saying they may post the minutes and post the meeting on the website if they have one. I just changed one word, it says they shall, because most towns who have a website should be doing that, but they're not. They do it when it's convenient for them. Well, Cordell Johnson stood up, went before the committee, and argued against the bill. And it was, it was stunning to me that he would do that. And I, I just wanted the, the public and the selectmen to understand that you, you were paying taxpayer money to a lobbyist to lobby against an elected representative, not just to give professional testimony, but as we to lobby against. As we discussed, he's complying with the RSAs that the legislature approved. He's not breaking the law, so he's allowed to do that. Well, he's allowed, yes, but I just wanted the public and the selectmen what, to know that. That's that, what lobbyists do. I'd argue against that bill, too. You would argue against it? Yes. Against that you shall post if you have a website? Oh, maybe I misunderstood. If you have a website. If you don't have a website, you're exempt? Yeah. I'd be because interested. everybody in this state doesn't have access to the internet. Correct. I'd be interested to find out what was his argument. It's painless. Why, why do you want to His argument <laughs> was that it's too much work. And one of the committee members on municipal and county government said that they have a very small town, he said, of a thousand people, and they have a website, and they have very little staff to, to keep their website up and running. So I told him, it may not be proper decorum, but I said, if you have a website and you're not administering it properly and you can't do that, then you should get rid of your website and then you wouldn't have to worry about posting. That, that didn't make any sense to me. So I'm just telling you that's that's what happened. Because I also put another, I did put it by a co-sponsored bill that would make it illegal for lobbyists, for tax money, to be given to lobbyists. Because the government shouldn't have a representative voice in the legislature. That's what your representatives are for. In that hearing, it was me and one other state, one other rep against 15 lobbyists that were in the room lobbying against the bill to not be, have them use tax money to lobby the legislature. It was, it was, it was stunning. It, you had to be there. How, how did that go? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what was 
Well, it's not voted on yet. That was the oh, hearing. Okay. So it'll be it, the bill itself will be voted on by committee uh, probably in the next few weeks. But when they read, they read the sheet of how people felt. You know, when people will come in and they may not testify. People will write their name and they'll say opposed or for. And after the hearing, they get this piece of paper and they read it. And they read the 15 names, opposed, 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 and it's all the New Hampshire uh, Municipal Association, the New Hampshire Regional Planning Commission, the New Hampshire uh, uh, Board of Education, just on and on, on, all of them, opposed, 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 and then like one, one person came in and said they shouldn't be using it for lobbying. It is stunning. That ends my public comment, my member comment. Any more public comments? Uh, not a public comment, a member comment. Member, I'm sorry. It's okay. Any, any more member comments? Um, yes. Uh, we have uh, two positions on the planning board that are up for re-election. I don't know if the, I'm not sure whose seats are up. I do. Can I share that with us? Yeah. David Champy, the second. And Jim Freeman. Anyway, my, the, the, my comment was basically that to encourage anyone and everyone to think about running. Or, and if you don't want to run, at least think about being an alternate. Or even if you run, don't win, please put yourself forward as an alternate. So, so we need help. And we only meet that's, once a month. That's not a solicitation. <laughs> <laughs> a fresh well, you, guys, you guys walked in, so you're, you're, you're stuck now. You know. And the forms are here. <laughs> and there'll be a full buffet. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Now we can say whatever we want, but how we really feel. Do you know? So, what's, why do we have this? 